also want to say thank you very much to, to everyone for giving up their time. And this is a Trillium Flow Technologies review of the LNG market. And we'll kind of give you a run through on the next slide, the agenda we're just going to talk through now and the speakers that we have. So we're going to start by just giving an induction of the speakers that we have today for you and an overview of Trillium. And we recognize it's a relatively new name in the industry, but I'm sure as we start to talk about some of our heritage brands, you'll see that we've been around for centuries um, across the pump and valve side of the business. Sebastian's then going to give a run through the liquefaction process, and I'm going to give some very high level bullet points around market trends and why the LNG market is so key for us. And then we've split the rest into three clear sections. We've got safety valves, isolation and control valves, and the pump overview. For all of this, we're gonna talk in general terms about, about the markets for all these products. We're gonna advise what Trillium can offer um, specifically, and then we're gonna spend a little bit of time on case studies for each one. The point I'd like to ask is we're gonna try and make sure we've got around 15 minutes at the end for Q&A. So please do add any questions um, to the Q&A section at any point during the meeting, and we'll, we'll make sure we pick those up at the end. And there's also a QR code there that you can scan, and that QR code will be flashed up later as well in the presentation, and that just takes you to uh, a little bit more information and resources online. So with that, I'll hand over to Adrian, who's just going to introduce himself on the next slide. Hey, thank you, Sam. Uh, my name's Adrian Croft. Um, I worked in the control valve industry since 1977, so quite a number of years. Um, dealt with projects on LNG, um, also oil and gas and power applications. So, um, Sebastian, I'll hand over to you. Thanks, Adrian. So my name is Sebastian Van I hold a master's degree in fine element analysis and joined and discovered the PRV industry in 2009. I first became familiar with the ASNI code during five years in the engineering department before joining Trillium, its product team, and being more focused on SARAs and pressure reserve line. Over to you, Francesca. Good morning, good afternoon. My name is Francesca Rizzi, and I'm currently serving the product management department. I have a long cross function experience here in Trillium Farms Italy, spanning commercial operations, quality, and engineering areas. Over to you, Sam. Thank you, Sebastian. You're right to roll us on a slide, please. So from myself, I've been in the rotating equipment industry for 15 years with the vast majority of that in the pump business um, and now working for Trillium Flow. Sorry. Sorry. No problem. I think we just, we just got a slight lag on the slide deck. So. Okay. <clears throat> Here is a lag. No problem. It's not quite come up for me. I assume that's the same for everyone else. I'll just, while, while we're catching up on the slide deck, I'll just give a very brief run through of Trillium Flow Technologies. So we are made up predominantly of three key areas. So there's pumps, valves, and turbines. We're not going to talk about the turbine section today. We're just going to keep it focused on pumps and valves. We recognize that, that Trillium may be a relatively new name to some of you. But in terms of the, the key heritage brands that we're going to talk through, we're sure they'll be familiar. So from the pump side, it's Begerman, Flowway, Gabionetta, Rotojet, Wemco, WSP, and most recently, Termo Mechanica as the recent acquisition. Um, I'll, let, I'll let the Valve Group cover some of the key Valve brands as they're into the LNG. The main point that we're trying to make you aware is we're able to trace our history um, back significantly. Our Valve business can go back to 1828 and our pump business to 1897. Again, Sebastian, have you had any luck resyncing the slides? Because I'm still on the agenda slide. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, let's move on the liquefaction uh, process overview on that case. Uh, many people are joining us today and we don't know exactly uh, your, uh, your knowledge. So let's uh, give us some uh, fundamental before talking uh, LNG. So the first one is, First question everyone may have is what is uh, LNG? So here are some mind-blowing statements to emphasize just how confusing these terms are because we can talk about LNG, LPG, NGL. So big pictures. 
propane and butane are the big kaunas for the LPG. They are also classified as NGL, as you can see. Yet, not every NGL can spot name tag that read, hi, my name is LPG, so a quote. What's more, you need to keep an eye on autocorrect when you type LNG because LNG is not an NGL. So, on one hand, we have an NGL or natural gas li liquid, liquid that define a group of hydrocarbon, including ethane, propane, normal butane, isobutane, and pentane plus, also known as uh, natural gasoline. They are a byproduct of natural gas processing and refining. So the last stop is LNG, which isn't an NGL or a LPG. It is methane. It's what is left over after most of the natural gas liquid are stripped out from the natural gas stream. So methane stands alone as LNG. LNG stands for liquefied natural gas or liquid natural gas. And as the name implies, it is about traditional natural gas, which has been cooled to the point of liquefaction. <clears throat> the fun fact is when it is liquefied, this gas takes up about 1 one the space that the same amount of gaseous natural gas would take up. So it's really, really compressed. Uh, it's easy for transportation. When natural gas is cooled to minus 161 degrees Celsius, it's become a liquid and can be sold as an LNG, a fuel domestic international, industrial, and transportation use. <clears throat> so the next question is, how can we achieve that? And a common question is also, is LNG systematically associated with cryogenic? It's very important to take a look on this graph because what we want to highlight here is finally cryogenic is a final application. So if you take a look on the liquefaction process, you can see, uh, especially on the temperature side, you will not cryogenic is only occurring at the end of the process. But before that, you can have steam, you can have a source service application, what we will try to describe in, in this brief uh, overview. So initially, natural gas fit through the gas recycling and metering. The raw gas and hydrocarbon liquid condensate enters the gas plant via pipeline system from the gathering station. The slug catcher separates feed gas stream into liquid condensate and raw feed gas components. At this stage, free occurring water is separated and removed during the process. <clears throat> then we will move to, as you can see, as the name implies, the acid gas removal system. So this system removes the sewer gas components. So gas means hydrogen sulfide, H2S, carbon, carbon dioxide, CO2, and carbonide sulfide, CRS, from the raw feed gas. So these operations prepare the feed gas for further processing. At this stage, it is interesting to note valent pump operate on sewer cells, and the weighted part matter section is very critical. Obviously, it could be upgraded as nickel alloy, for example. The two next steps are gas compression and dehydration. So gas compression driven by stream or gas combustion turbine boosts the pressure of the purified gas to allow further processing to take place. Some of the purified gas is filtered and also utilized as fuel gas for the global system for hydrocarbon processing, for example. On dehydration, on dehydration units, the sweet gas, when leaving the acid gas removal plant, is saturated with water vapor. Dehydration removes the water vapor, which reduces hydrate formation. So hydrate is a real issue because it causes potential clogging of the heat exchanger tubing in subsequent operation. Water concentration must be reduced to less than one part per million before any further shearing takes place. It's really important also to note the water concentration because sometimes in our internal procedure, we have some requirements regarding the limitation of the, of the quality of the water and uh, the water concentration level. So there is a direct connection between the process and what we have to do internally if on, in our internal process. <clears throat> so sorry, here- to, Sorry, Sebastian, to interrupt. We seem to just have an issue where there's two of us sharing screen. Could you just stop your screen share, please? Just so we can make sure they're all in sync. Seems like some people are having a few issues. So I stop the share. Can you stop the share, please? Yeah, and then everyone should be able to see my screen and you should be able to okay. see it. It seemed like yours got frozen on the agenda. All right. 
Thank you, uh, Sam, on that case. Uh, so I see your I see your presentation. Can you move on the gas compression, please? Yes, thank you. Uh, so okay, here we it's okay for the day. we can move on deshydration, deshydrate, hydrocarbon processing. Okay, no worries. <clears throat> so the next the next step is how you can see the hydrocarbon processing. Here we come to an interesting part of the NGL as NGL starts to arrive. So hydrocarbon processing, it's it's sweet dry gas passed through a series of heat exchanger has no high shear where it is cooled by evaporating liquid propane refrigerant. Condensing natural gas liquid, what we call NGL, separate from the gas stream in each stage has the dry thick gas cooled from ambient temperature down to minus 35 degrees Celsius. <clears throat> the NGL from the shiller are fractionate into components ethane, propane, butane, and higher fraction. It is the same ethane and propane that can be Use, also used for preparation of refrigerant in the liquefaction process. <clears throat> Can you move to the next slide, so the liquefaction? So the liquefaction, the last but not least, uh, the liquefaction of the feed gas take place in the main cryogenic exchanger, which in most plants consists of spirally wood tube bundled inside an aluminum shell. A multi-component refrigerant, also as now has uh, MCR, pass through cryogenic exchanger to further shield and liquef liquefy the feed gas using joule thompson control valve. Feed gas enters the lower bundle at minus 34 degrees Celsius, passing through the middle bundle and then the third bundle, where it's cooled down to approximately minus 160 degrees Celsius. At this point, the metal component of the gas condensates into a liquid and flow to refrigerate storage tank. As the LNG leaves the cryogenic exchanger to liquid cools, the liquid cools further as the fluid flash to near atmospheric pressure level. So the liquefaction happened from that case. And then we arrive to the LNG storage uh, once the gas, because the liquid, it's flow into a large insulated storage tank. Boil off gas on the top side, maintain temperature and pressure in the storage system. Periodically, the LNG is pumped into a tanker through insulated pipeline. And when it is arrived at the right destination, a similar unloaded process will occur when the tank reaches port of destination to dispatch the liquid gas to regasify, Adrian will, uh, will hand over this part, discussing about the superator to regasify the, sy the system into the, the pipeline, the domestic pipeline. So all we're trying to do on this slide is just to give a very, very high level overview of why this is such a key market for us. Obviously, everyone's aware of what's going on in the world and why this is going to become even more relevant uh, over the coming months and years. But just to give some very high level numbers around why this matters so much at the minute. So there's over 1,300 LNG projects that we have line of sight of between now and, and 2032. That is that is not just for the for the projects that are within our core areas, but that's that's largely a global figure. Those projects do range in size, and we're going to show some of these projects in terms of scale as we as we go through the presentation. Um, there's a real split on on which countries are leading in terms of spend and which are leading in terms of number of projects. And we're seeing a lot more of the, the smaller scale loading and unloading terminals. But in terms of spend, you can see the fall that make up the vast majority of it. So USA, China, Canada and Qatar, as, you, as you'd largely expect. But if we were to look at that chart by, by quantity, there's only US and China that would stay in that top four group. And again, just to try and quantify it in terms of dollar spend. So when we look at the CapEx figure, we know that these projects translate to over three billion of pumps and valves in the next three years. And that's what we class as our core territories. That, that is not a global figure. And if we were to look at that globally, it'd be in excess of 4 billion just on pumps and valve capex spend. So again, <clears throat> we're not trying to turn this into a detailed dive in the market. We're just trying to give a very, very high level overview of why this is such a, a significant and key market for us as Trillium. And with that, I'll hand back to Sebastian. Thanks, Sam. So 
let's move on uh, as usual uh, safety is a priority of Trium and it's, kind of, it's, it's quite typical we start by safety first. so safety first and uh, start with uh, some pressure some key study we have on the PI what we want to be focused today is regarding the leakage because um, on, on this especially in this industry and regarding the period we we, we are facing up we made emission uh, and Methane emission, especially our primary customer concern. That's the main challenge for any LNG player. So where does the methane emission come from? Basically, if you take a look on, on this graph, on, this, uh, on that, you can see 59% is coming from extraction and the rest 20%, but it is also significant, in, is coming from uh, transmission and storage. So there is some room of improvement here in safety valve as a critical the critical mission is to reduce this 20% emission because most of these emissions are coming from leak and the routine venting during the production, but also processing and transportation. How to, why should we reduce that? Because first it has a negative impact on the green, this considering as a greenhouse gas, GAG, 25 times more powerful than CO2, 84 times more potent than CO2 during the 21st years. So how we can do that? basically uh, betting on high premium product performance, spring loaded pilot operated solution will uh, our cost effective solution that help to reduce any leakage. So let's start with um, the, and, uh, you, you cannot believe it, but it starts by the steam. So on the next slide, we will take, <coughs> we'll talk about the star steam. So star steam is, is, has a, is as me one product. So it's mainly it's mainly for steam application. As you if you if you learn me uh, if you listen to me at the beginning, we said the gas compressor might be driven by steam and boost the pressure on the purified gas. So in a, even on the on the LNG process, you might find some steam process and start steam as a critical role. Uh, overpressure time and blowdown are really, really reduced thanks to the valve efficiency. The valve operate closely uh, with the process optimization. So a key benefit of this valve is a fast response uh, provided by a dual adjusting ring system adjust the internal pressurized volume chamber. The leak tightness is also improved as the star steam utilizes a proven reliable disk design with the name is a star disk. The highest pressure, the better tightness as the, lip, the lips of the disk provide an axial deflection and optimize contact strength proportionally. The valve is also certified for both full nozzle and restricted lift. Uh, restricted lift minimizes the steam loss, shattering issue, and stabilizes the complete system operation. So that's a very, very efficient way to optimize and to reduce the steam loss and make your system more efficient. On the next slide, I will I can we'll talk about the star flow. So star flow is our best seller, it's a conventional API standard 526, pressure reserve, spring loaded with standard, standard to phase dimension. It means the basic, essential American and European standard intending for the LNG industry. It's a real robust design that fits 100% with the LNG process. First, because we have a full nozzle that offers a premium, the proven advantage of protect the body from the sore gas. Uh, there is no need to use an upgraded material, material, material because the only rated parts for this valve are limited to nozzle and disc. Uh, also, <coughs> gasket is not really a, a preferred for collagenic condition. And on that case, we adopt a metal to metal seat combined with a full nozzle that's allowed to cover a wide range of temperature, including cryogenic. The seat tightness is boost thanks to uh, the auto adjusting ring and uh, disc. Uh, these both parameters allow us to optimize operational performance, keeping the valve tight and reducing pressure loss resulting a cost saving. Um, <clears throat> what's more, uh, we have a unique trim on this product. <clears throat> and if you, yes, if you just click on the next, um, just click one time, you can see here an interesting version of the cryogenic condition. Keep in mind, any safety valve, it can be spring loaded or pilot operated valve, has to open at the set pressure and release the capacity. That's uh, the two main criteria, open at the pressure with the capacity. Is a uh, spring, Material is affected by negative temperatures, the material composition can be impacted and the sub pressure can change. So, a typical option we offer on spring loaded is a spacer 
spacer allow to protect the spring, keep the same performance, repeatable performance to keep exactly the same set pressure. So it's quite standard. On this version, you have the P3 series, conventional type, with a standard body bonnet bolted connection. Uh, we also can develop a P4 series balance type to withstand higher back pressure and sometimes P5 for open bonnet, but it's separate. <coughs> this valve is not on, yeah, no worries, it's fine. Uh, on the opposite, the, if the staff team can cover the bigger storifies, uh, v, double V, so over API. On the opposite side, we have the 9 series. The so 9 series is a thermal expansion valve for, for smallest capacity. It's a, adopt exactly the same technology, so full nozzle, adjusting ring, single spring for air gas, trim, and liquid. But we, also, we, are, we are also able to offer a B refi, so it's smallest refi with typical um, inlet size limited to half inch, quarter inch, one inch maximum because it's a thermal expansion. By the same, we can adopt a spacer for, uh, to, to protect the spring and meet uh, repeatable set pressure performance. On the next slide, you will, we, we will wonder why to select pilot operated valve, what could be the reason to adopt a pilot operated valve. So in, in Sarazin, we develop two kinds of pilots, full nozzle, semi nozzle. So full nozzle, is, has been adapted based on the star flow design. It is exactly the same body with the proven benefit of the nozzle, of the full nozzle. So if this valve is especially appreciated on cruising condition. For the same reason, uh, the full nozzle is only considered as a main weighted part, there is no gasket. And in that case, offer premium performance on cruising condition. Because on this industry, service condition continue to increase and be as close as possible. The operating pressure is very close to the set pressure. <coughs> It can be required to move from the initial spring loaded to pilot operated valve. And on that case, you can adopt 76 series without having to readapt your piping because it is exactly the same center to face dimension. So that's the main proven advantage. But on top of that, whatever the, the pilot operated type, uh, pilot offer this premium advantage to be to, to, to increase the tightness thanks to a 30% larger dome seal area related to the inlet seat. The pilot operated type remain perfectly tight up to 98% of the set point. It's 8% more than the basic spring lead type. Metal to metal seat as usual because it's a cryogenic type. There is many, many reasons <clears throat> to adopt pilots. We don't, we, I could spend more than an hour to discuss about that. We will arrange a separate uh, webinar next uh, next, uh, at the end of this month, to talk about more in detail regarding the 76, 78 series especially. So <clears throat> uh, let's move to, to some options. So yes, you can, you can release this one. Here, you have some really, really technical detail we put on the 76 series to meet cryogenic condition. So basically, in terms of uh, material, no, nothing special, we adopt a stainless steel, stainless steel component, sometimes money when it is required, full nozzle for the reason I explained, to limit the number of weighted parts and to limit the, the elastomer. To protect the pilot, <clears throat> because we keep some elastomer on the pilot, we optimize, we use cooling coil, as you can see on the uh, bottom right corner, uh, to in improve the heat exchange. Drain plug is also fixed to reduce the possibility of rainwater accumulation, cold gas, or icing. So that's an overview of a uh, different kind of technology we can put in place. When cooling coil is not uh, enough, we can also uh, put in place a buffer tank. If you move on the pilot side, on the next slide on that case, <coughs> uh, on pilot, we adopt the different kind of technology, different kind of gasket customer. Uh, because in the process, if you, if you remind, everything is not cryogenic. It can be cold, minus 40 degrees Celsius. And depending on that, we will adjust the gasket selection. So the entry level is to adopt a low temperature nitrile, LT uh, NBR. Uh, that's uh, also suitable for extreme condition too. And for, for uh, very cryogenic condition, we will adopt a PTFE combined with a graphite energized gasket 
that uh, offer premium performance on the cryogenic, good, good chemical resistance, proven uh, tightness, and uh, reduce the risk of leakage. <coughs> um, what's more, as I explained, we develop different kinds of pilots. So 76 was the full nozzle, 78 is the, the, the semi nozzle, the real one, designed per API 5262. Uh, this valve is especially designed to offer a better size capacity ratio. More recently, we adapt the 78 full bore. Uh, we develop the 78 full bore to raise the bar and to increase again the size capacity ratio. So this valve is available in a single outlet or dual outlet. And I do invite you to attend the webinar at the end of this month because it will be dedicated to the 78 full bore. <coughs> so, all these valves meet s mid criteria. As you can see, it's a UV stamp. Uh, we can also address specific valves to protect storage tank. So if you move on the next slide, I will talk about more in detail regarding the 74 series. Storage tank is uh, an overstory because it's under ASME requirement. ASME requirements start at 15 PSI, 1.03 bar. Under this value, it's considered at a low pressure. So we adapt especially low pressure uh, pilot operated valve to protect storage tank. Uh, <clears throat> pilot operated valve is, uh, this valve is a good solution first for, for two reasons. Compared with the standard vent weighted load and its simple construction, the 74 series pilot operated valve is stable near to the set point. Acting according to these simple rules, the higher pressure is better bubble type you will have. And the modulating action pilot adjusts the main valve lift and thus will reduce valve relieving time. Indeed, the relieving capacity will be achieved very quickly, 10% over pressure, conventional SME section 13, formerly SME section 8 division 1, uh, making the pressure decrease and optimizing the tank holding time. So 74 series demonstrate multiple benefits. It's high accuracy, easy to set, with a tilt test connector, this valve device, <coughs> device sorry, offer an answer to the methane leakage issue that, again, is a challenge for any LNG player in, in this market. So, on one hand, we have leakage. On the other hand, it's also good to have a clean process. During the, the brief introduction we have regarding the liquefaction process, I mentioned we need to, to take a look, to be cautious regarding the water concentration. And for that, we need also to follow a very strict procedure. On a yearly basis, Trillium France is audited to evaluate the plan for capability to design, manufacture, and test in-house pressure retard that needs, and we follow ISO standard that drive uh, the way we need to, to perform specific cryogenic tests. So, ISO 13648 is one of them. And more recently, we raised the bar. In 2021, we also managed to, to meet the ISO 15848, which is a novel standard that drive uh, alien testing. So it's even more stringent for, for customers who want to reach better patents. We have a very stringent process. The valves are clean as each at any stage, as you can see, before assembly, after assembly, before painting, the valves are fully decreased uh, to operate uh, in a, and to meet uh, the customer requirement, to meet on a very stringent process. We, as you can see in this picture, we put cap uh, at the inlet, at the outlet, to keep the trim clean uh, during the complete assembly process and before shipment. <coughs> In the factory, we, we have two uh, different kinds of process to test the valve in a real closing condition. It's not a requirement, but uh, it's, it's part of that. It's part of customer requirements. So to test the valve externally, we can uh, put the valve in a kind of a swimming pool, nitrogen swimming pool, liquid nitrogen. That helps the valve to be in a real condition, but uh, on the shell, on the, on the valve body shell. And 
in the formal method we use in the, in the factory. And more recently, we also invest on the boil-off process. So it will be present on the next slide. The boil-off process allows us to test the valve in a real condition as per the ASME, the, sorry, not the ASME, but the EN 13,648. And on this process, the valve uh, is able to open on nitrogen. Uh, the liquid nitrogen is pushing on the on the gas nitrogen and make the valve open in a real condition. You can go on the next slide on that case, Sam, please. Just to show, yes, thank you. <coughs> the boil-off process. So the valve, we can test the valve in a real condition, make the, the valve pop, uh, measure the valve seat tightness as per API standard 527. Uh, so we can complete a complete, so we can perform complete functional acceptance test, set pressure, seat tightness um, before treatment. Any valve follows exactly the same process when it is about cryogenic cells. Thank you. Over to you, Adrian, for the isolation and control, please. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Sebastian. Um, so now that we've covered safety valves, I'm going to look at a number of other valves that we produce in Trillium. We can't hope to cover every valve and every valve type in a relatively short presentation. So I just want to touch upon a few of the main types and, uh, of valves that we produce. So before I do that, let, let's talk about customer specifications. Uh, customer specifications are often different. They, they have different features that they want incorporating in the valves. Uh, and basically, we're a bespoke valve manufacturer where we can meet uh, virtually every customer requirement, um, certainly for LNG applications. What you, what you see here on this slide is a range of valves that have been produced. First of all, at the top of the slide, we've got a butterfly valve for cryogenic application with butt weld ends. The valve in the center of the picture is actually one that, that was uh, quite appropriate. I took this photo yesterday in our workshop, and this is a valve or a series of valves, there's some cryogenic valves in the background as well, that are just um, passing through the workshop uh, in assembly. These are actually destined for China. The valves themselves are, are but weld ends with, with special end caps on that will eventually be machined off. Um, uh, and there's about 20 or 30 of these valves actually in our workshop at the moment. We'll touch on a separate slide on uh, desuperheaters, but essentially on, on cryogenic uh, control valves um, and many cryogenic valves for that matter, then there is uh, quite often a requirement from the customer to, to fully test them. And we do that in a, in a bath of liquid nitrogen. Um, again, specifications vary, but uh, as we dip the valves into the liquid nitrogen, we, we pump helium through the valve, measure any leakage that, that takes place uh, through the valve, and also make sure the valve will functionally operate um, after it's been cooled. The picture on the left is actually some cold box valves. Um, ironically, although it's a cold box, uh, it's located in Bermuda. Um, so the valves themselves uh, are completely enclosed within the cold box. Uh, the valves um, can't be accessed. Everything's completely sealed within the box. So the valves are specifically designed so that everything, um, all the trim within the valve is completely retractable or completely serviceable once you take the actuator from the top of the valve off. So, so the valve stem, the, the seat, et cetera, can be fully serviced once, once the uh, top is removed from the valve. So very important for cold box applications. So, um, not many people know, but the, uh, the UK was the first country to import liquefied natural gas. 
And this was uh, way back in the 1950s, um, early 60s. And as a consequence of doing that, then, then the UK uh, developed a standard BS6364. And BS6364 has been the cornerstone of many specifications for valves on LNG applications. So it's only a relatively short standard, um, but most of it actually defines the height that the valve bonnet should be. So uh, basically what it says is, is the valve bonnet uh, shall be extended on top of the valve so that the stem packings will be further away from the cryogenic uh, fl fluid that's mainly going through the valve. One other um, key consideration um, when we're designing and specifying valves for cryogenics is we have to look at materials and consider the materials of the shell of the body. Or, or derivatives of, of um, stainless steels. So those, those are important um, um, in terms of, of being able to resist the cryogenic test um, temperatures that the valves are subject to. And again, the center picture here just shows some valves uh, being tested. Again, some of them just being lifted out of the bath of liquid nitrogen. So the important part of the valve or the part that's doing the control of the process is the valve trim. And here we've got a selection of valve trims uh, that can all be used on different parts of the process. The picture that we see on the left-hand side is, is what we call a multi-flow trim. This is a, a single stage cage trim valve for, with one stage of pressure reduction through the, through the valve trim. So in the majority of cases, LNG applications will be low pressure class valves, the majority being class 300, class 600, uh, an odd one perhaps being class 900 or class 1500. But as a consequence of that, then uh, the pressure drops are relatively low and standard trims, um, in this case, the multi-flow trim are perfectly suited for those applications. They give good control of the process. They give good control of the pressure drop um, through the valve itself. The uh, trim, the trims that you see in the center and to the right, uh, we've got in the center our cascade trim. So where the pressure drop is higher or, or where we've got issues with the process fluid, then the cascade trim is really a, a series of cylindrical spools or cages. And these are, are locked together to form a tortuous flow path through the valve. So as the process fluid goes through there, we get control of the pressure drop. Where we're dealing with gases, uh, then we get control of the noise. So it gives us uh, a wide range of control for a, a relatively simple trim. The picture on the right hand side is our extreme trim. So, so for example, where we're dealing with the uh, gas side of the process, um, where the gas, for example, is dropping, where it's got a high pressure drop or it's dropping to atmospheric conditions, we have to be able to control the noise that's generated by the gas. And the, the way that we do this with our extreme trim is we pass the gas through a tortuous flow path. So the tortuous flow path gives us multi-stage pressure reduction through the valve trim. But more importantly on gas services, we uh, on the outlet of the disc, um, we also include what we call a mesh. So the mesh helps us control the frequency of the gas noise or the jet exit as it, as it leaves the trim. And again, this gives us a, a, a degree of noise attenuation through the valve, the valve trim itself. So uh, high, high levels of pressure reduction, noise controlled through the trim, which is the key takeaway for, for, for the trim there. 
So basically, to summarize that slide, a range of trims to suit a wide range of applications. Also, what we have here uh, and part of the trims and choices of trims that we might that we would offer is we have a range of, of leakage classes. So the most common is, is class four leakage, which, which in our terms is quite a standard trim. We could also offer metal to metal uh, class five shitter, but more importantly on um, gas applications, then often the uh, trims themselves are required to be bubble tight. So to test the valves, and again, every single valve that we produce is fully tested. To test the valve, we, we dip it into to a bath of liquid, and we physically count the number of bubbles leaking out of the valve um, for, for a specified period. So the valve trim itself, uh, where it's class six shut off, would ha typically have a PTFE seat, and the, the pictures that you see here are examples of valve trims with PTFE seats, different sizes, different designs, uh, according to the application. As I said a couple of slides back, we also manufacture de-superheaters. Um, most people don't think about de-superheaters uh, in terms of cryogenic applications. Most people think of de superheaters in terms of steam uh, and cooling steam. But for cryogenic applications, a de superheater still fulfills the same principles. Okay, we use different materials, again, uh, applying stainless steel. But the de superheating principles are still the same. We're still injecting a fluid of, of a certain heat into a, into a different fluid of a, of a different heat and we're conditioning the, the fluid as it goes through the de-superheater. So what you see in the center two pictures is um, a, a ring style de-superheater where the nozzle itself transverses across the whole diameter of the pipe. So the nozzles that you see on, on the photo here inject um, the fluid uh, all the way across the, the uh, pipe area and gives good cooling. The nozzles that you see on the right hand side uh, again are made from stainless steel. So um, again important for cryogenic applications. Um, and, and again the principle is the same as we would have with steam. The nozzles themselves have to have good atomization uh, they have to inject the, the liquid into, into the pipe and be able to get a good spray pattern across the uh, whole band of, of the pipe. So basically a range of nozzles. Again, we haven't covered everything in this, in this short presentation, but a range of nozzles according to the application and according to the specification um designed to meet the the uh, customer requirements so with that i'll hand over to francesca who's going to uh, talk about the pumps thank you adrian i would remind that it is possible to leave your questions in the chat box and uh, at the end of the presentation we will be happy to respond in the next slides, uh, we will approach a review of our pumps portfolio, focusing on where our pumps can serve energy services with uh, their available uh, wide range and uh, premium legacy brands. Here we can see the installation of two API 610 via 6 pump. Pumping elements have been already positioned. And uh, for each pump is visible uh, above ground, uh, the light gray discharge head, topped by the motor bracket, uh, supporting uh, the dark gray motor box. Typical applications uh, for uh, pump, uh, or for such a pump, uh, are loading and uh, unloading fluids, uh, like in this case. Or in addition, uh, they can be used also for fire water and booster uh, services. 
uh, the low cost the performer of uh, the LNG and uh, the AI, LNG reliability, make this technology attractive, improving economy of scale with larger plants and continuously enhancing chances of success for all partners involved in the value chain. Turning gas into LNG requires many applications and a huge number of pumps are involved. So pumps will continue to play an indispensable role Trillium has uh, a, a very extensive uh, uh, range among uh, its uh, pump grants to offer across all the services involved uh, in uh, the LNG value chain. For example, loading and unloading pumps, uh, booster, reflux pumps, balance of plant uh, and uh, auxiliary services pumps. Thanks to a remarkable and uh, significant Significant experience derived from three combined centuries of history. If uh, we remember two vertical pumps available from Gabioneta pumps, Thermomechanica Pompe, and Flowway brands, our pump design is proven to maximize reliability and uh, to increase uptime. Here we have some examples of a trillion portfolio. Starting from uh, the API DS1 for seawater sumps and uh, tank installations. They are the only alternative to submersible pumps with advantages for maintenance. And uh, also, they are complementary to DS4 pumps used uh, for higher heads and flows. The API DS6 are uh, double case embarker pumps. In general, for uh, NPSH uh, available criticality. Each time that it is necessary to increase the NPSH available, a booster vertical DS6 pump can be associated to the main pump. They are also an alternative to horizontal pumps. Typical barrel installations are uh, hydrocarbon and condensate services. Another important model uh, uh, is the API with five multi-stage radial split uh, with uh, different uh, nozzle con con configuration, specifically designed for, oil, for, for all oil and gas uh, industry. Besides these uh, high pressure large pumps, uh, Trillium portfolio offers uh, also smaller pumps. Starting from uh, on the next slide, starting from the API BB1, one and two stages uh, axial split pumps, widely used as booster and uh, in pipeline services. Uh, continuing with uh, the BB2 radial split uh, available in uh, various configuration and design, uh, double suction impeller, one stage or two stages, uh, single suction impellers, uh, or with double suction first stage impeller. And uh, available also with uh, different suction and uh, discharge nozzle positioning, top top, like in this case, or side top, and so on, to meet uh, the requirements from the plant. Um, API overhang, OH, horizontal like in this picture, or vertical inline overhang pumps complete the portfolio related to the pump used in all oil and gas services. Talking about pump operation on an LNG plant, typical applications are LNG loading and cargo for DS6 pumps, with uh, the highest value of uh, capacity and uh, pressure involved. And uh, then we have the, the linear mean booster pumps with uh, low pressure and uh, capacity for the BB1. Uh, then uh, we have the, the, the gas processing and balance of plant or oil pumps with the smaller BB1, BB2, and the uh, overall pumps with the reduced range of capacity and pressure. 
On uh, the next slide, we can see a visual on this slide. We can, uh, we can see a visual overview of the main oil and gas plants. LNG process involves many of them and a huge number of pumps, as we will see in the, the next slides. At the center of the picture, we, we can see a floating liquefied natural gas ship. It uses all API pump type and the trillium portfolio covers all of them as seen. Top left, we can see terminals that uh, involve especially loading and unloading and transfer pumps where are used VS1, VS6, uh, and VS6 vertically suspended pumps. While lower left, we have the gas processing plants with reflux transfer and refrigerant that give space to the use of VS6, OH2, and uh, OH3 pumps. Uh, Trillium uh, pumps portfolio can cover all uh, these uh, services. Among these uh, services, uh, natural gas liquid, uh, liquid fractionation uh, that we can see on the next slide okay. is, um, is a process widely used in, uh, in all gas operating plants and also including uh, LNG ones. Only individual uh, NGL product uh, can be used, are usable. And so passing uh, through liquid fractionation towers, uh, all components of the NGL are separated until uh, you get uh, natural gas line that contains the process. Considering the operating conditions, uh, quite low pressure and capacity, such processes are the field of use of all overhang uh, and uh, between the ring uh, uh, one and two stages pumps. So on, uh, on this slide, uh, we have an example of uh, Gordon, that is one of the world's uh, largest plant, LNG plant. It is a truly a significant example of how an LNG factory can be really extensive. It is located on uh, Barrow Island, Gordon comprises a free train LNG facility, producing 50 million of uh, ton per annum and a domestic plant, uh, domestic gas plant, uh, uh, with the capacity to supply 300 terajoule uh, to Western Australia. Such uh, large plants uh, involve over 1,000 pumps and uh, Trillium has an extensive product range called upon them. Pumps used on an LNG plant are really numerous and various, and they are also they are always employed on key services. So on the next slide, we okay, thanks. Uh, we, we can see um, that uh, uh, pumps, uh, considering that pumps are employed in key services, pumps reliability is uh, really crucial uh, to maximize uh, uptime and to minimize uh, downtime and uh, maintenance. To assure pumps reliability and longevity, Trillium adopts uh, several key design features. Among uh, these features uh, regarding mechanical design, uh, we have, uh, for example, the finest material selection that ensure more unfailing running, while uh, several options such, such uh, composite carriers or polymeric wear rings uh, allow for uh, smaller running clearances and are more resistant to contact and friction during startup and uh, during upset conditions. So helping uh, in improving efficiency and the long-term uh, reliability. Regarding hydraulic design, uh, for example, double suction impeller options allow to reduce uh, MPSH uh, requirement, requirements. And uh, uh, for vertical pumps, uh, with the significant consequence to drastically short the length of the pump, making both uh, pump cheaper and uh, lowering the installation cost. 
summarizing uh, the vast range of hydraulics from all our gabinet pumps uh, to the way and the thermomechanic of all the brands, I'm sure we almost uh, always have a design for every application. Our legacy company have over 300 years of combined experience, and this allows us to select the right pump for the application at issue. Ensuring that the pump is operating with its preferred operating region have a dramatic impact on its reliability and longevity, crucial aspects considering energy criticality. Highlighted the key design features are put into practice with our widely referenced AHPB pumps. They are heavy duty barrel multi stage pumps, radial split diffuser type with several nozzle configurations. Capacities are up to 1,800 cubic meters per hour and heads up to 3,000. 600 meters. Standard design pressure is uh, are 40 bar with the special executions up to 350 bar. Just as uh, significant, DDM pumps are uh, VS1 uh, wet pit. They are uh, on the next slide and uh, uh, they are uh, we VS1, wet pit, uh, wet pit configuration, or VS6, uh, double casing, vertically suspended uh, pumps with discharge through the column. Several sizes allow to reach flows up to 1,800 cubic meters per hour and uh, um, heads up to uh, 2,000 meters. Large high single suction or double suction pulse stage impeller allows to meet low MPSH requirements. In addition, assemblies of flow wave balls and columns and the gabionetta discharge head allow to meet more flow head conditions. So, um, pump involved in LNG are many and various. And uh, three new installed bays fully reflect uh, uh, this condition. On the next slide, uh, we here we can see an example of uh, an API 610 VS1 pump from our thermomechanical pump portfolio. It uh, operates in a water supply service at an LNG gasification terminal. The capacity here is quite near 9,000 cubic meters per hour, had 336 uh, meters, and the drive, uh, drive power is uh, 1,350 kilowatt. Another example from our experience on uh, the next uh, slide, uh, here we have the an important project for a floating liquefied natural gas plant. We are dealing with a large supply delivered a few years ago, involving 45 among OH2, BB1, BB2, and BB5 API 6 and 10 pumps. Operating conditions are very different, and so the pumps. From a few cubic meters per hour and low head, for the smallest overhang and uh, between bearings, up to 6,500 cubic meters per hour capacity for uh, BB1 full water circulation pumps, up to the uh, 1,700 heads and meters head for uh, multi stage BB5 NGL range action pumps. Involving temperature in this case uh, are between minus 15 Celsius degrees up to 150 Celsius degrees. Concluding this section, we can say that uh, Trivium is able to offer a very large option of pumps 
for uh, many applications uh, in the LNG value chain, uh, relying uh, on uh, this uh, center beyond experience. I thank you for your attention and uh, remembering that uh, you can leave your question in the chat box. Now I give the floor to Adrian, who will summarize the uh, for technology and LNG value proposition. Okay, thanks, uh, Francesca. Um, so basically, this is just a, a summary slide, uh, just to sum up what we've been talking about and, and highlighting some of the key points. The first thing uh, from a Trillium point of view is we offer a global solution. Um, so the uh, our sales offices, for example, are located around the world. So that gives you one point of contact uh, as a sales reference. Um, the products that we offer, for example, um, the safety valves that Sebastian has been talk talking about are specifically designed for, for LNG applications. That they're, they're not a, a product that is off the shelf, uh, that, that uh, has been adapted. Um, it's specifically designed for LNG and, and specific applications within the LNG market. Within our maintenance facilities, we, we again, we have a global presence and can, can support and service valves throughout the world. Uh, the products that we produce um, are designed for ease of service. Um, so we've talked about pumps, we've talked about uh, control valves, for example. All these products are, are, um, are designed and specified for to uh, ease the service routines within a plant. And overall, this gives an, a, a cost-effective solution to, to um, you, the <coughs> user, uh, in terms of um, uh, the overall performance of the valves and the pumps, uh, the maintenance cycle, the maintenance uh, regime, and ultimately the long-term operation of the plant, um, minimizing downtime and maximizing uptime. So without more of a to-do, we'll move on to the questions, um, if that's okay, Sam. Uh, I've got a question that's come in, uh, which I'll handle a couple of the questions, first of all. Uh, the first one, question is, uh, do Trillium have a triple offset valve? And the answer is yes, we have a triple offset valve and also a double offset valve as well. So, so we showed earlier a, a slide of a butterfly valve. We can supply butterfly valves for control applications. So again, specially um, uh, adapted with, with material selection, et cetera, according to the specific application uh, and according to the design pressure and design temperature. So control and triple offset valves are available. Another question that we have is, um, do we offer valves for the complete range of gas process systems? And again, the answer is yes, uh, but just to qualify that, that question, um, then uh, maybe it's worthwhile giving you a few examples. So for example, if we talk about gas pipelines, um, over the past year, uh, we supplied valves uh, for safety shutdowns on gas pipelines. I can't go into too many example, uh, too many, uh, too much detail, but essentially the valves were specifically designed for, for safety application. They had the instruments mounted separately to the valves as a safety uh, seal concern, but more importantly, they, they were thermally lagged by um, heat protection blankets. So quite an unusual application, quite unusual to, to wrap control systems in, in uh, thermal protection blankets, but unique to the customer application and specification. Another uh, systems, just, just thinking about different systems is 
we were one of the first companies to, to supply valves to inject gas under the ground. So one of the important projects um, offshore in the UK was to start storing gas uh, under the ground. Uh, I know we're all used to extracting gas from the ground, uh, but gas storage is important, especially in the UK at the moment, in the times that we live in. Uh, we're also supplying valves and equipment uh, for um, onshore gas storage underground. So these type of systems um, are, are designed um, so that basically I, in areas of the UK where, where a lot of the um, a lot of the ground under the surface is uh, on salt flats, we mine out the salt, uh, and this is done by spraying the salt. Uh, it takes about ten years to to mine out the caverns. And once, once we've got the full salt mined out of the caverns, we can then inject gas into the storage uh, caverns and store gas in, in the summer and use it in the winter. So these are some of the things that, that you may not be aware of that, that if you drive, drove past them, you wouldn't realize what the plant was doing. But some of the unique solutions and systems that we offer for get not only LNG, but for gas systems. Uh, with that, I'll hand over to Sebastian. Uh, there's some uh, questions come in on pressure reducing um, safety valves, should I say. Thanks, Adrian. <clears throat> yes, I see some. Uh... Some question, a lot of question. Uh, one of them, uh, what's the competitive value of PRV versus uh, Anderson Greenwood Crosby? So of course, um, it's not a secret. So our main competitor is uh, Emerson that developed uh, Anderson Greenwood Crosby brand. First of all, I would like to clarify part of the history because um, well, Sarasa is a very old brand. Uh, uh, we celebrate our 170th anniversary in 2018. But in 1983, Sarazin was sold uh, at a US company with the name was uh, Anderson Greenwood. And at this time, we developed a part of Brexit valve. So we need to keep in mind in 1986, uh, before being a Keystone International, Sarazin and Anderson Greenwood was one single brain. And we developed exactly the same product. Now, just to come back, we, we evolved separately and what I mentioned, for example, regarding the pilot, 76-78 full nozzle, semi nozzle, uh, it's a big advantage to have the full nozzle. Mm -hmm. We are not the only one, but Emerson, for example, don't develop that. API has been developed in close partnership with Emerson and that's the reason API, you only have semi nozzle pilot. But definitely uh, full nozzle is a big advantage because we promote on spring audit type, we promote the full nozzle and why it should not be the same for pilot. Why finally full nozzle should not be a good advantage for pilot because you remove some gasket and you don't have any, uh, because elastomer is elastomer. We are not elastomer manufacturer. And when we have to deal with crazy condition, it's better to have a metal metal seat. You can change to, to have a plastic seat, but at the end it's very hard to and doesn't fit with uh, <coughs> with the cryogenic condition. So especially on pilot, we prefer to go on the metal metal seat and we managed to win major projects. Of course, during this webinar, I cannot release all the projects on which Sarazan has been involved, but we, did, we deliver a lot, a large amount of pilot operated valve, as you can see on the, on the pictures I, I introduced during this webinar, uh, where uh, finally full nozzle makes a difference. So that's one point. I have another question. What's the difference uh, how we can recognize uh, GBS, GOS? So it's another uh, Crosby reference. So it's very simple. Uh, GOS is a conventional type and it matches with the P3 series. And the GPS is a balance type and it matches with the P4 series. Uh, you have a lot of questions, Mr. Sebastian Amadi. So uh, yes, uh, I think we, we can uh, give you my separate uh, contact detail if you want to catch up because you also have some issue regarding potential potential uh, stroke uh, um, where the disk will be a block on the disk holder 
there is different method to strip out the to, to eject the disk from the disk holder uh, in case it is uh, frozen probably due to the fact the valve for a certain period uh, it depends if it has been uh, the design has been especially designed for the, the valve has been especially designed for that but in Sarazan we have uh, specific tools to uh, to handle the the disk into the disk holder of the PRV. <coughs> but uh, well, I, I can I can explain you separately on the keys. Um, just two things before we before we head out. There is the QR code on there again for some more information that we that we couldn't quite fit into the webinar. Please reach out to any of us that presented today if there's anything that we can answer or or support further. And we just like to really thank you all for your time. We realize it's a it's a big commitment to give up an hour and, and 15 of your day. And we, we really do value that. So thank you very much, everyone. And with that, we will conclude the webinar.